This very important video depicts the various types of hemorrhages seen in the head. To understand this video thoroughly, you need to have background information of the layers of the head. The layers of the head are from outside to inside. That is the scalp, the skull or cranium, the meninges and the deeper brain parenchyma. The scalp has further layers best remembered by the mnemonic scalp. That is S, that is for skin, C for connective tissue, A for aponeurosis, L for loose areolar connective tissue, and P for periosteum. The skull or cranium is made up of the outer table, diploid, and inner table. Meninges and the deeper brain parenchyma has three layer, three membranous coverings called meninges that lay between the bony skull and actual brain tissue. These membranes are called dura mater, arachnoid mater, and pi mater. The extracranial hemorrhage is defined as hemorrhage occurring outside of the cranial cavity that is in the scalp and intracranial hemorrhage is defined as any bleeding occurring within the cranial cavity. Intracranial hemorrhage has four broad types. First, the subterior hematoma. It is the accumulation of blood between the dura mater and arachnoid mater from rupture of veins which cross the surface convexities of cerebral hemispheres. The SDH can occur in acute brain injuries or chronic cerebral atrophy. Most commonly, head trauma causes motion of blood of the brain relative to the skull, which can stretch and break blood vessels transversing from the brain to the skull. In older patients, a subdural hematoma can occur after trivial head injuries, including bumping of the head on a cabinet or running into a door or wall. Next, the epidural hematoma. It is most commonly seen in non-penetrating head injuries in which blood accumulates between the skull bone and dura mater. In 90% of cases, bleeding is from laceration of a branch of the middle meningeal artery, often associated with fracture of the temporal region of the skull. With arterial bleeding, the hematoma expands rapidly and symptoms appear in hours. Venous epidural hematomas are common in pediatric patients. The classic presentation, though seen only in 20% of cases, is a loss of, consciousness, or of consciousness after the injury, followed by a lucid interval, then neurologic deterioration. Next is the extracranial hemorrhage. It is seen outside the cranial activity in the scalp due to emissary vein rupture. You can visualize in this case the clotting has happened between the aponeurosis and the loose areolar tissue. Next is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. This bleeding happens between the arachnoid membrane and the pi mater, larger arteries transversing the subarachnoid space. Usually 95% of cases result from rupture of a berry aneurysm. The common sites are shown in my video of cerebral aneurysms of my channel. Cerebrospinal fluid is blood stained in subarachnoid hemorrhage. A thunderclap headache, sudden severe headache or worst headache of life is the classic presentation and rapidly loss and rapidly losing consciousness. Here you can visualize the gray matter and the white matter. Next, going to the intracerebral hemorrhages or parenchymal hemorrhages. 10% of strokes. Most occur after the age of 40 years and are spontaneous without any trauma. Over 80% of intracerebral hemorrhages are secondary to hypertension and the most common site are, is around the basal ganglia and internal capsule from rupture of lenticulostriate artery.
Now you can see a quick overview of all layers from inside to outside. That is the white matter, gray matter, the arachnoid, the inner layer of the dura mater, the outer layer of the dura mater, the skull bone with its diploic vein, then the periosteum, the loose areolar tissue, the gala apo or aponeurosis with its superficial scalp vein, subcutaneous fat and then at the last the skin.